Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill from Mr. Bluegill Guide Service out of Armour, Wisconsin. And uh, you know what? We are on some awesome walleyes right now. So sit back, stay tuned. We're going to head out again today and see if we can't get some more of these beauties. A lot of people struggle on hauling gear out on the ice. Uh, there's all kinds of homemade contraptions and stuff for the snowmobiles, four-wheelers. Uh, but take a look at BucketRacks.com. I got one of these new racks this year and absolutely love it for my snowmobile. Uh, I've got the two-bucket model. They make a three-bucket model. Uh, it took about a half hour to install. The cool thing is when you want to take it off, two hitch pins, the whole thing comes off and you're back to just a snowmobile if you want to go hit the trails. Uh, a nice locking mechanism for the ice auger uh, with a hitch pin or you can put a padlock on there to keep it secure if you're at a resort or whatnot. Uh, but check them out, um, a great answer to a lot of people's needs for hauling gear out on the ice. You guys haven't had a chance to check out the deep freeze scooper here the one shot skimmer this thing is amazing so much time saved new design this year they kind of shortened up the little holes the perforations in the skimmer so a lot more slush is gathered done you know, even though it's a little windy out today, I think what I'm gonna do is just put the striker gear on and uh, until we find some fish to flip open the shack, uh, the Eskimo here, I think I'm just gonna fish off the side and um, you know, once we find a school, we'll, we'll set things up, but uh, let's get started. One of the questions I get asked all the time, and uh, you know, even when I have clients out, is you know, what type of technique are you guys using? Um, and I really, I can't stress enough, um, you know, we're not using any live bait. So what you're really trying to do is make whatever spoon or jig and wrap uh, look as natural as possible, or dying, or you know, something that's hurt. Um, so it's important that, you know, take a, take a bait, go in your bathtub, and just watch. You can even see it in that six, eight inches of water. If you're just sitting there going up and down, you know, all you've got is a metal spoon going up and down the water column. It's like a yo-yo. Those fish aren't going to be attracted to that. Uh, what you want to do is quick little snaps. You want that line to come up really fast and then flutter back down. You want to be able to see a loop in your line and then let it, let it come back down. And that's pretty much with every bait. Now with, uh, you know, as you got more aggressive fish, um, or different types of spoons like a Swedish pimple or a slender spoon. Um, you're going to be a little bit more quick on the snap and let that thing flutter back down. On a jig and wrap, uh, you're going to slow it down just a little bit and you're just going to kind of give it a lift and then let fall. Lift, let fall. Uh, but like I said, with these spoons, we're doing quick snaps. Um, that's going to be our calling. Now, when a fish comes in, first thing I'm going to do is it seeing what that bait was doing. It looks like it's dead. I'm going to let it fall and then immediately uh, start just jiggling a little bit and raising it up at the same time, nice and slow, but it, keep it at a steady pace. Uh, a lot of times too, kind of why I don't fish inside of a shack is these fish will come up and bite right underneath the ice. So as you keep bringing your bait up, uh, if you're inside a shack, once you're at this point, you don't have any more room left for a hook set. Um, so you either got to be really nice and smooth on your reel as you're bringing it up or fish outside and then even when you do get up that high, you still got enough room to lift up and get that hook set. Uh, but that's, the, that's pretty much the technique we're using. 
Some days you gotta be a little bit slower, some days you gotta be a little bit harder. Uh, another thing too is what I'll do is I'll drop it down into the mud. And you'll lift it up, snap it up, and let that thing fall right down into the mud hard. And as you pull it up harder, you create this cloud of dust. Uh, that these fish are coming over to see what's, you know, maybe there's some food or something scrounging around down on the bottom. So that's our technique. Uh, let's take a look and show you some of the baits that we're using. Now the baits we've been using uh, the last few days, uh, pretty much the staples for me the last couple weeks uh, out on the Winnebago system are the Swedish pimples. Um, that's a pretty much a given. Hammered copper, hammered gold, uh, the slender spoons in the new hammered gold, and uh, the silver and white. Um, but then too, you know, these look a little bit different than a jig and wrap uh, that you guys are used to seeing. These are actually the jig and shads. Um, the nice thing I like about these is that I don't have to worry about the fins breaking off. Um, they got the split ring on the bottom for the hook. Um, and, you know, we're not losing fish. Uh, that bottom hook is not coming off. Uh, we're not breaking the fins. So I've been using a lot of the, uh, the jig and shad wraps too this year. Um, and then same thing, you know, no bait, no live bait, just fishing them nude. Looks like mobility is going to be the key to success again today. Um, you know, these fish are moving around a lot. Um, you know, and it seems like early morning, late evening, um, they'll finally stop and sit in one spot for a little bit. But uh, throughout the day, uh, you know, we're probably drilling 50, 60 holes on some days just to stay on top of these fish. And it seems like, you know, you get to one hole, you catch one fish, and that's the last one you mark. Um, so you really got to, you know, if you want to be effective, um, get yourself a snowmobile, four-wheeler, and uh, just keep moving around. Uh, you know, it's the nice thing about this lake runner is I don't like when a bag will cross and cracks and heaves, and uh, this year, especially with all these big ice chunks running around, um, you know, you're not banging your plastic sleds and putting holes in your sleds. Uh, these things are built like a tank. Uh, metal runners, um, 50, 60 miles an hour if I want, and I can head over to the other side of the lake or anywhere I want to and not have to worry about uh, putting holes in my sleds. So we're going to pick up here, we're going to move, go drill some more holes and uh, see if we can't get on them. There you go. That one came on a pimple. Thanks to the bag of walleye. Two of them just come in here. That's a good eater. Probably, uh, oh, I don't know, 17, 18 incher. Beautiful fish, but you know what? There's a couple more down there. And uh, put the bait back down and see if we can't catch another one. There's another nice one. See, it's just, you know, keep that bait moving. Um, that's really the biggest thing is keep it moving, keep it steady, find a rhythm. Uh, the one nice thing about the, this uh, 688 from Hummingbird um, versus a, a standard flasher is that you can actually see your cadence. You know, and you keep your cadence the same. Um, you can watch how those fish react to different cadences, you know, different jigging motions, and uh, you can uh, react with the fish. Uh, but you know, the one thing I've been seeing too is that uh, pounding the mud has really paid off. Um, so, one more left to go and we're done. Woo! That is going from worse to worser. Got a nice fish on here. Come on, girl. Oh yeah, nice fish. Ah. On the uh, on the pimple again. That's a beauty. That's like the best eating size. It's just perfect, uh, you know, that 17, 18 inch fish, nice and healthy. Uh, beautiful Lake Winnebago walleyes. Tell you what, weather is uh, not very cooperative today. Uh, the wind's starting to blow a lot harder, and uh, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, 
probably go inside the shack, jig a few more if you guys got the picture. Um, I'm gonna leave you with some video from uh, this last weekend with my kids and uh, Terry and Rick Manlick from Bite Me Box Tip Ups. Um, check it out. Uh, we had a lot of fun chasing flags and uh, you know what? Get yourself some tip ups this year. The tip up bite has been absolutely fantastic. Especially when you get into an area where you know you got a bunch of fish. Um, you can vary your depths, uh, but especially on these cold front days and uh, you know high pressure days, these fish have really been going for those tip ups. So take a look. I'm Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill from Mr. Bluegill Guide Service. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the water. Oh, it's a big fish, guys. It's a big fish. Take it, take it easy. I see them through the ice. Real slow. Real slow. Let him go. If I tell you to let go, just let go. There he is. Don't, don't pull him There you go. Good job. There you go. I see it swimming right here. That's just a big flash of gold. Good job.